Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. Today, as the title says, I'll be reviewing the little known game, Poke Park, Pikachu's Adventure for the Wii. Let's get going. Now, I remember really liking this game back when it came out in 2010. I remember being super excited for it because I saw a commercial for it on TV, which Pokemon hadn't done I believe since the campaign for Emerald. I remember it being really fun, but I don't know if that's nostalgia talking or if it was genuinely a good game. And since I've been meaning to start reviewing games for a while, this seemed like the perfect opportunity. Anyway, without further ado, Poke Park. There's something else, uh, this adventure. For the Wii. Before we get started, let's get some background on the game. Poke Park is a Pokemon spin off game developed by Creatures Inc. and released on November 1st, 2010 in North America. Poke Park is described as an action adventure game, by the way, if you don't know, I'm a huge fan of the genre, and only has single player capabilities. Along with Hey You Pikachu and Pokemon Channel, it's part of the Hey You Pikachu series? Wait. No, 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 it, it, it can't be related to this, C can it? Well, I'm a little more skeptical after learning it's related to this. Well, what's wrong with this? This is a whole nother video entirely. But I don't remember this game having sucky voice controls or really sucking overall half as bad, so who really knows? Anyway, booting up the game, it looks pretty good graphically and gives off a nice nostalgic Pokemon feel. But before starting the game, turn on the fast text. Seriously, do it. Anyway, we open to Pikachu and his friends trying to get in place to form a pentagram. Or they could be playing tag, but who really knows? But before they can properly get into position, Mew comes along and it's only logical for our friends here to follow him. Mew then opens a black hole in the floor because... That's just how he rolls, and Pikachu falls in. Instead of doing anything about it, Mew just sits there. Just sits there. Like this. Just sits there. This guy is pretty sketch off the bat, but these guys seem to trust him, so I guess we'll go with it. For now. Anyway, the rest of the Pokemon decide the only logical thing to do is jump in the hole themselves, because... Who wouldn't? Anyway, we continue to see Pikachu falling from way too high so we know we can bid him goodbye because we all know there's no way he could survive that fall. Spoilers, he does. Then we're back to Mew who starts telling us about something called the Sky Pavilion, a magical floating island, or I guess, pavilion, and that if we don't help him, it's going to fall out of the sky. Great! And the only way to stop Angel Island, excuse me, Sky Pavilion, from falling is to befriend all the Pokemon in Poke Park. Because with the power of friendship, children, anything is possible. Anyway, Pikachu wakes up from his fall apparently unscathed and is greeted by Chatot. Say hi, everyone. You then go through a lengthy tutorial where you learn the basic controls. Now, I'm never a fan of tutorials that introduce controls like this, just as much as the next person, but at this point you can obviously tell this game wasn't made with design awards in mind. But don't let that discourage you because the game picks up and is actually pretty fun. Um, sometimes. Now that you've been tasked with befriending all the Pokemon around Poke Park, how do you do this? By playing games with the Pokemon around the park. Obviously. Now, there's a couple ways to befriend Pokemon, with the five main skill games being the most common. These games are Chase, where you must run down the opposing Pokemon and knock them down in a certain time limit. Battle, where you must fight the other Pokemon and attack them using your Dash and Thunderbolt attack. Hide and Seek, where you must find the Pokemon that hides from you. Oh no, where is the Pokemon? I just don't know. Quiz, where the Pokemon you're trying to befriend asks you a series of questions. And lastly, Obstacle Hop, where you must climb and jump over obstacles to get to the Pokemon as it tries to set you back with attacks. And there's an unnamed way I call chores. In chores, you do things like collect items and give them to the Pokemon you're trying to befriend. There's also another way where they play now ask you for berries, which is in-game currency, in order to befriend them. Because if the game about friendship can teach us anything, it's that people are only your friend because of your money. Anyway, the question you're probably asking is, are these games fun? Aside from the quizzes, hide and seek matches, and occasionally the too easy chase game, yes. Especially the battling, but more on that later. 
Luckily, there aren't too many of the boring ones, so you'll have fun most times. Well, most times. The next question you may be asking is, if it's in the same series as these two games, does it have any linear or coherent plot whatsoever? The answer is yes. Well, kind of. Now, I may be being a little too harsh, so what actually is the plot? I'll quickly explain. Well, like I said, our friend here, Mew, wants you to collect the Master Emerald pieces to stop Sky Pavilion from falling. So you go around befriending the Pokemon and finding the pieces. This normally wouldn't be too hard at all, but it turns out no one comes out to play because the Zone Guardians went all Berlin Wall on each other and refused to let the Pokemon mingle. Luckily, you can talk to the Zone Keeper, Venusaur, and try to convince him otherwise. Or Chikorita can. Pikachu doesn't talk. He refuses to talk to Pikachu, but Pikachu, or I should say Chikorita says for Pikachu, Pikachu can beat the zone attraction, and if he does, Venusaur must listen to him. Now the zone attractions are pretty much mini games where you use Pokemon you befriend to get new high scores. Now these will appear multiple times in each zone and this is why befriending Pokemon turns out to be important, because you can use them to do your bidding. Anyway, after you beat it, Venusaur remembers how much fun playing together can be and decides to reopen the zones to each other. Yay. He then gives you a piece of the Master Emerald, or excuse me, Sky Prism, because you know he just happened to find it. Anyway, Venusaur is too lazy to restore balance himself, so he sends you to do all the work for him. You then travel through the rest of the zones, you got your generic ice levels, beach levels, cave levels, lava levels, and even a prison level. And then you do the same thing over and over until balance is restored, all the while making friends, powering up Pikachu, and collecting Sky Prism pieces to stop Angel Sky Pavilion from falling. Then, after a lot of friendship and quite a few loading screens, did I mention the loading screens? Oh, well, they're really not that important. Wait, is the- what is- Long story short, you'll be seeing a lot of these. Anyway, you then go to see Mew to give him all the pieces, but he says they won't work because he can't use the pieces right then. Why? Because he wants to play games. Great. So you befriend Mew, shit goes down, and you battle. Now I'm not actually going to complain about this part because the Mew battle is super fun and I won't spoil everything, but it's one of the more enjoyable moments of the game. Anyway, something about friendship, this, some more of these, and finally one of these. Now, all in all, the plot isn't awful, and it's luckily nothing like these, but just don't be expecting much from it because what makes this game fun at all is its gameplay, if anything. Seriously, that's not a joke this time. Now, from what I showed you, it may not look fun, but at points it is. What initially attracted me to this game at first was finding out battling didn't depend on levels or stats, but skill. When I was a kid, I always liked seeing Ash's unevolved Pokemon like Cyndaquil, Totodile, Squirtle, and Pikachu battle obviously stronger foes, and how they would win, not because they had type advantage, but skill. I never liked that I had to evolve my Pokemon and literally played my first Pokemon game only evolving my Chikorita into Bayleaf and not Meganium, even though it was level 55 by the time I got to Red. I liked my Pokemon for who they were and didn't want them to change and always felt that you should battle with the Pokemon you like best. Introduce this game and battling is all about skill. Pikachu does have the chance to be leveled up in different moves throughout the game, but you don't have to and I always love freedom. That's one of the main reasons the Metroid games are one of my favorite series of all time, only behind Pokemon. Pikachu takes on opponents not because he has a type advantage, but because of the player's skill. Now, before I go on too long, I'll actually go over the battling mechanics. In a battle, you face another Pokemon and try to knock their health away until it's gone, much like a normal Pokemon battle. Pikachu attacks three ways, running into the opponent in a tackle-like fashion, like in Chase, using Thunderbolt, and lastly, Iron Tail. You run around dodging attacks and looking for openings, and this is what I love. Don't you sometimes wish you could see what moves looked like coming from a Pokemon during battle, and that moves weren't pre-programmed animations, but things you controlled? Well, in this game you can, and it's great. 
Now, Pikachu is the only playable character for these fights, but it really is fun perfecting his moveset and the harder battles don't only bring fun, but a challenge. A much different pace from the rest of the cutesy game. And like I said, if the battles are too easy for you, it's not required that you level up except your speed stat, which will have to be at full in order to complete the game, but you can make it as difficult as you please. Another aspect I really enjoyed is going online where you can find codes to unlock legendaries to battle and befriend. And these battles are intense, specifically Darkrai and Groudon. Seriously, I can replay these fights along with Muse over and over. They are seriously fun. Now, I showed you both sides of the story, so what's my final verdict? And most importantly, is this game fun? Now, you definitely should not be discouraged by these two games, because they do not really represent it whatsoever. This game can actually be quite fun at some points, unlike these. But then again, I may be partial to it, having played it as I was younger. But then again, it is a Pokemon game, and if you like Pokemon, you will probably enjoy it. This game is pretty fun, and I do actually recommend it to fans of the series, but I really can't praise it too highly, considering that. All in all, if you're a fan of the series, I do recommend you pick up a copy of Poke Park, Pikachu's Adventure, because it is quite fun, and if not fun, you can laugh at it, I guess. That's what I did. Hey, maybe you liked this video, and maybe you didn't. That's cool. Not really. Anyway, if you want to stay tuned on future videos, you can subscribe. Up to you, no pressure. And if you want to see some non-reviews, I make videos on culture and geography and Pokemon all the time, so you should watch them. Just saying. Anyway, sharing would be a cool thing to do, you know, considering you just watched an 11 minute video on friendship, but that's up to you. Anyway, I've been Anarchy, and I'll see you all next time.